What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Jeff Die Friendship Podcast uh, episode. I don't know. It's just been a long, long road. I don't know what episode this is. Today, me and Tony and Randy Valerio get to talk about a lot of different subjects. It's a nice, chill, fun, cool Wednesday episode for all you creeps. Uh, we love you guys so much. If you're a Patreon subscriber, we can't express to you how much uh, we appreciate your support and your help. Got some new subscribers recently. I appreciate that. Um, if you guys uh, don't know what Patreon is, it's just a place where you can support the artists that you like. And when you do that, you get advantages. So the advantages of, of my Patreon is if you subscribe for a uh, fee a month, you can uh, basically directly contact me anytime you want, and I'll reply. It's kind of like having my phone number. Uh, also, you'll be able to watch this podcast every Wednesday. Um, we'll have a new uh, over you know an hour or more of content every single Wednesday for you, fresh, that you can watch and listen to and enjoy. Um, you'll also get free Comedy Club tickets to every place that I'm doing stand-up. If you show up, message me on there, say, I'm here. I want to see your show. I will come out and get you, give you tickets, and we'll do a little meet and greet. You're basically buying my friendship. Um, my friendship is free, but not people know how to access me. So if you're far away and you want all this extra goodies and stuff, come be my friend by going to patreon.com slash Jeff Die. Subscribe there. Uh, we would love to have you. If you're just listening to the podcast, could you at least please go to iTunes or Podbean or wherever you get your uh, podcasts and just hit subscribe? We would love that. Um, you guys are going to enjoy this episode. It was a real fun one. We had a good time with it and a lot of uh, a lot of important arguments we've made and also a lot of laughs, which is what the Friendship Podcast is all about. Um, we love you guys. Enjoy. <laughs> Stop eating, you fucking Start animal. Start this podcast off with some Uncrustables. Yeah. Free commercial, baby. Stop giving free commercials. Yeah, you're right. They need to pay up. They keep pay ignoring up. us. I know. We've been, we've been, you know, very loyal soldiers in the Uncrustable War of Do you think there's ever been breakfast? a podcast? <laughs> Do you think there's ever been a podcast that has almost 90 episodes without a sponsor? I mean, that's that's a record. I mean, try 170 without a sponsor. My podcast, brother. Yeah. <laughs> that's just not yeah. true. That's not true. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of free uh, marijuana products. So I guess technically we haven't and been paid in cash. But we did get paid in green. We've done like one ad read early on, and we, we didn't get anything from it. Yeah, no. We did like an ad read. It was, and then we ran it for like I don't know how many episodes. Yeah, and then they were just like, "Oh, you didn't get anything." They go, oh, just trusting you that we didn't get anything? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's weird. Show us your sales. Show us your audience yeah, sales. Go, yeah, nothing came in. <laughs> <laughs> Great racket. Great hmm. racket. Yeah. No, well. Seems like they might have given you something to have us <laughs> read it. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. Um, well, we're it for the love of the game, I guess. Yeah. A lot of good responses from that Mike Cummings episode. A lot of good messages. I think it resonated with people because... Um, he's a, he was a server. Maybe a lot of people that listen to us have, have either been a server before or in the service industry. Uh, people love that. A lot yeah. of response from the Domino's thing with uh, Christiana Sin. Yeah. And, and people... <laughs> I know, that's why I'm trying, I feel like a that's why I uneven in. response, too. I've been that's watching why, this. I've been watching this. It's fucking uneven, man. Yeah. I, I, I don't know strange. why they, like, everyone's not on her side with this one. I, I would guess 100% of the people should be on her yeah. side. Yeah. I think my, my prediction would be why some people aren't is because she's a porn star. Sure. And they're annoyed. It's very judgmental. Because I've yeah. seen, I've seen a then, lot of comments that leaned to that. Right. Like, oh, we're upset that he asked her for sex when she sells her body. Like, it doesn't make that's it not right. The point. Yeah, that's it's not also point. her choice. What the yeah, fuck and is it's this her nonsense? And it's her like, job. It's still and her it's, choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree 100%. And the other thing that I thought was fascinating is that um, the people, I think what triggered people was that they... 
they thought that I was suggesting that sh- we should sue, which they saw as like a frivolous lawsuit, which in my opinion is like this big hacky thing. You know, when I'm always like venting about like common think, when people say yeah. the same thing over oh, and they yeah. think it's very original, they think that's their own thought. They're repeating oh, some you're other person's salmonella opinion. If you eat raw eggs, like they, everyone, that's the only word they know is like mm-hmm. salmonella or like uh, when they say like, oh, I like being an uncle because you can take the baby and have fun and then give it back. <laughs> We've all heard these like <laughs> generic stupid things. And I think a generic stupid thing is when people go, oh, that's America. They're so sue happy. They're so, the frivolous lawsuit. There aren't. In yeah. fact, tons of there aren't as many frivolous lawsuits as you think in fact there's a that mcdonald's one the original one where the woman spilled coffee in her lap and she got like uh she sued mcdonald's and it was like the first ever like publicized frivolous lawsuit if you look into that court case google it was not a frivolous lawsuit that woman's that woman's coffee was at a boiling hot temperature and if you look at her her like legs where she spilled it inappropriate What's and I'm telling you, dude, they were like, like third degree burns from a fucking cup of coffee through pants. That How's one, that happen? I know. I think it's odd that that one got like caught on and was considered frivolous when she actually got burned. When there are thousands of other ones, like yeah. a lot of patent scams, a lot oh, of yeah. fake patent lawsuits. Like, but those aren't sexy. Like, but a woman getting burned at McDonald's, like, that was legitimate. I mean, that woman. Fuck she her legs really up bad, got yeah. burned really hard, and everyone's like, yeah. "This is so stupid." And then the, I know, I'm, I don't remember when it happened, but I remember like society. Oh, it's gotta be 25 years ago now. Being like, "Oh God, well, coffee's supposed to be hot, duh." And then they made it seem like she's a dummy for thinking. It's like, yeah, your coffee should be hot, but her coffee also had like a um, a the snap lid, lid the on, lid yeah. didn't work. Like the lid was like a faulty lid that they just kind of yeah, handed it, was it to old her. Styrofoam cups, so it would be like the yeah, and they didn't. Yeah, this and one sucked. Right. And also, they famously make their coffee at McDonald's not anymore, but at the time, they famously made their coffee like thirty degrees hotter than it should have been because everybody puts milk in it and they put things in it, and that would cool the temperature. So if you got a coffee, they would intentionally make it scorching hot so that when you put in your your milk or creamer, that then it would be like 180 or whatever. But that means they're making their the yeah. bo- like boiling ass water. If it's hot enough to make your skin slide off, it's probably too yeah, hot. Yeah, <laughs> way too hot. What do you put on your tongue and your fucking tongue if falls out? If you look out. at the yeah. photos, you're like, oh my God, yeah, she definitely deserves money for like, and all she wanted was her medical bills covered, and she wanted like a little like pain and stuff, so, you know, like like some crazy thing, and McDonald's settled, or they didn't settle. They lost the lawsuit, and they had to give her like, I'm making a number up. Let's say it was like twenty million. Yeah. Well, then it later turned into only like five hundred thousand dollars. So everybody saw, oh, this woman gets twenty million dollars from McDonald's because coffee is hot. What it's a bitch! When, That's a frivolous lawsuit. When did we start caring about the corporation as if the corporation cares about yeah. us? Like, McDonald's fuck that. makes that billion, an hour. Yeah, who gives a shit? How many? Yeah, they sell a billion Big Macs a day. Yeah. They, could, they could spare twenty twenty million bucks. Yeah, for a woman that they wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but again, what everyone does is like I, I, and I was venting about this last night with Justin in private. Is like our world is so obsessed with being contrarian. They think it's clever to be contrarian. They don't even care if the idea is their own. They just think it's oh, I'm I'm going against the grain. I'm so unique. I'm a, and that's what like children do. That's what yeah. children do to seem like they have an identity or independence. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened with this Christiana Sin thing. Is everyone saw like a porn star? complaining about how a guy wronged her, a business wronged her, and everyone's like, oh, God, get a life, this big-titted, fucking annoying. Like, like they literally were like... Like, she's not human. Yeah, like, she's not a person. Yeah. And one girl actually said to me, she goes, oh, well, you wouldn't have cared if it's an overweight librarian. Sure I would. Yeah. I, I definitely would. I would care for her. I would say, hey, that you got wronged, and let's sue Domino's. That's what I would say. I yeah. also cared at a principle, because you and I spoke about this, Jeff. The fact that Domino's has her information and this guy just was able to get it. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It's like private information. Like, I'm worried about my information with Domino's yeah. now. Like, it goes beyond just her being a porn star who got wronged. It's like any one of us can get our shit stolen by some asshole Domino's driver yeah. now because apparently this guy was able to do it. And also think about the fear factor. Like, I mean, we don't think about it because we're like dudes, but like – being a petite woman in a hotel room alone where a dude, she's now just made a guy mad because she rejected him. He's calling her names. He still has her number. He still knows where exactly she is. where yeah. she is. That can be very scary for like a girl right. who's traveling by herself. Like, so there's fear factor. There's also, he, he, he broke laws. You yeah, can't there's, solicit there's a lot of bad, a lot of things. A lot of bad takes yeah. on those in the comments. What like percentage? people are like, he just sent a text message and he, he tried and no big deal. Like nothing happened. Like, yeah, thank God nothing yeah, happened. Thank God. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it could not. 
stuff. You know? Well, and also, like, so many people are like, well, he, this shouldn't be a lawsuit. He should just lose his job. He well, didn't. He didn't lose his job. So <laughs> yeah. even your Nothing stupid happened. comment of being like, well, that's all, it's like, what is wrong with people? How many of these, of, of the comments that were like so, sort of negative and backlash or that were, uh, you know, calling her a big baby for that. How many of those those comments are coming from women? Would it was you like say? fifty fifty actually. Okay. Yeah, it was. Because I, I feel, a- I, I, in, in an odd way, I feel like women are all about other women until it gets to sex stuff. Then, like, like if she's a porn star, if she's a stripper, or if a woman's yeah, you they're know, a little harder on that. Escort, which is legal in most other you know first world countries. Like they come down so hard on other women for that. But then they claim to be like, like you know, really supporting women's empowerment. It's like, wait a minute, you can't I have think it both ways. Because a lot of dudes were like taking the. Domino's pizza driver side, like I like. Oh, because they're incels. I mean, they're, it's they're not like out of a big <laughs> fuck that chick, dude. Like, yeah. you're like she should be sucking his dick. Yeah. It's not an actual porn. So movie. there were just as many pigs that were male as female. Yeah, yeah it was sure. it was it was weird. Yeah, it was weird comment section. I'm helping her get a lawyer. I'm literally been texting with her saying that's, like, no, nah, I got my lawyer knows some people in Wisconsin. I and, hated reading all those comments, so that's why. Oh, I, I like yeah, that's yeah. why and, I commented. And unfortunately, in this country, you apologize with money. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, that's just how it is. Like Domino, to, to make to make to, for, for Domino's to learn the lesson, they ha- it has to hit their pocket. Right. It's the only way anyone learns anything in this right. country, and right? that's what makes it a good like a learning learning move. Because she's like, oh, this is just like just because she's famous, you should you're trying to like. Help. I was like, no, but that's what makes things happen. Yeah, what about is like- that that somebody like this gets in the news, and then Domino's like, God damn it, now we got to be a way more careful. Like we should have been yeah. careful about this, and we weren't, and we were reckless on even punishing the guy. So this is how you learn. This is how you teach corporations lessons. Like, what you if can't- it was a single mom right at home, and she's getting. And this guy's doing that to her, like, like it's still dangerous. It should like, it's be still dangerous. Outraged. Yeah, it should be outraged. It's it's just yeah. not. Obviously, it's a pattern of behavior that you don't want to have repeated. Right. So you have to you have to slap the you have to slap Absolutely. Domino's murderer. You have to slap him on the wrist. And I think that's what makes celebrities good is that like you know if a mom maybe got silenced and doesn't even make like the local news, whereas like if you have some sort of. Um, power or some, some sort of profile. position yeah you can really stick the screws to these corporations which which you know maybe more pedestrian people can't do yeah so it's great that's what we'll, you should be we'll doing it for even. yeah like if chris D'Elia gets mad at united airlines and like starts oh, he te- tweets them yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good for you dude because a lot of people can't do that yeah. so it's a it's a it's a hopefully use your powers for good but that's it is a superpower in a weird way i don't know i've been watching yeah. a lot about sexual stuff lately uh, preparation for this interview? Or, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Here? I mean, like, um, there's this documentary about the guy who invented Bikram yoga. Oh, that's a great one. Do you one. know about this guy? Oh, yeah. Do His you... name's Bikram, and he invented Bikram <laughs> Is yoga. Is this the guy who's, uh, he did that 60 Minutes interview and just completely trashed <laughs> the women that were accusing him of? Yeah, he's it's a psychopath. Amazing. Yeah. He's a literally psychopath and a rapist. And, uh, and he invented, like... Bikram yoga, which is like one of the, it, like we, I guess I was under the impression that yoga is like this like Eastern peaceful, like great thing. And this dude is a trash bag. <laughs> <laughs> he like literally is like yelling at his, like the people in the class, like move your fat gut, your fucking fat gut, disgust me, tuck it. Like he was like, yep, that at the people. And some people were like, this is really great. And then one woman was like, and hey. the listeners got to go look him up. Cause the, coming out of this guy's mouth is pretty funny. I mean, he's short. He's got a pot belly. Bald head bald with a ponytail. With a long ponytail. I mean, he's very, it's like very 1980s, not like, but 2020. It's fucking bizarre. He's a bad dude, man. Yeah. A bad dude. Very but, unapologetic. Yeah, it's not good. He could be president. <laughs> I don't, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if you watch the documentary, it's like mortifying. Because they shouldn't have told me he was a rapist. They should have just let me like him for the first half. Because now after, like, the, when I'm watching the documentary the whole time, I'm like, Betty raped her. You know, like, like <laughs> when the, when the like, first girl talking is like, uh, she's like, when I first met Bikram, it was just such this new thing. And I was very, I felt like I finally found like a community. Yeah, and, like, I'm sure they're all 15. Young, and I'm like, oh, he raped her for <laughs> sure. <laughs> she's making a checklist. Like his lawyer, and she's like, well, Bikram in the beginning was a good guy. He's like, he raped her. Like, I was like literally <laughs> trying to predict all the people. He didn't rape the lawyer, but I thought maybe. Or <laughs> maybe he got around to her. Man, man, he Dude, tried. It was crazy how big the, I mean, like, how many people do you think were in those sessions that he had? Like, there was probably like six, 700 people in those sessions. Oh, yeah. Maybe and each more. of them paid $10,000 to be there. Fuck, Do you know that? So in the beginning, it was just like he had classes and they paid for yoga. But then he started doing teacher training. And he'd have other teachers do teacher trainings. And each one of the people paid $10,000. Oh, straight So there'd be scheme. like 500 people and they with $10,000 <laughs> 
each paying to do this teacher training. Good God. And you could only open a studio of Bikram Yoga if you took the teacher training. And then once you open your studio, then obviously he owns a part of that because it's called Bikram Yoga. So anytime you see a Bikram sign or anything like that, piece. he's still collecting money off of it. I, that's, see, they have all these fucking master classes, man. Judd Apatow did a master class, Steve yeah. Warren. Where are the gurus giving out master classes? Because I want to take that class. I want to learn how to start a cult. These guys have some weird power over people that I want to learn how to fucking. I mean, they like dupe otherwise normal fucking people yeah, but, into giving them money. I mean, it's obviously awful the way they do it, but to have that talent, that's what I want. Oh, I want I that wasn't talent. I'll use awful. it for good, I swear. I won't be like that. Oh, <laughs> I'll be I the wasn't... one guy with power who doesn't corrupt, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> You think you can trust so this guy? Way. <laughs> no. And you already and you and here's the thing. Just the fact that you want to know. know. Yeah. And here's the thing. We love you. We love you to death. I think the the first thing, the first step of these cult leaders, whatever as crazy as they are, they're like for some reason likable at first. Oh, I don't have that quality. I know you're already you're already losing on that. I'm front. in the hole on that. <laughs> So last night, Randy came into the comedy club. Like I was like, "Hey, come to the improv. I'm, I'm performing in the side room, and we can hang out." He comes in, and you know, most people come in, they go, hey, what's up? They give you a high five or like a hug or something. Like, what's up, man? Because someone's performing. Ran I saw Randy come in. He's he fucking slams a penny at our friend. At our buddy Alex. <laughs> That's how he says hi. He comes in and whips a penny across the room at our friend Alex. <laughs> in the middle of a show. <laughs> just coming in hot. Yeah. He's like, yep, that's Randy. He's like yeah. laughing at him. He's like, ah, I threw a penny at a Jew. I was like, oh my God. God. It's amazing. No, but uh, I will say the, um, the, like you said, where's the master class for these gurus? Yeah. Like, you know, you want to learn how to, I think what made Bikram great isn't his personality. He's obviously flawed. No. He's obviously kind of, I mean, he, I don't want to say sociopath because he isn't, but he's definitely a narcissist. Oh, yeah. And then he also, the cultural difference, he has this like kind of arrogance of like, oh, well, if they didn't want to have sex with me, then they just shouldn't have. But he's like literally, he's like manipulated them. He's brainwashed them. He's also like predatorily groomed them, which is exactly that what I think is the child key. molesters the so, do. The selection, I think, is what's key. Like, I don't. I feel like you got all these women young. They're like all coming off a bus into the big city. Well, but yoga is fantastic, and it's very. It's like CrossFit. Yeah. Nobody just gets into it. You get into it. Yeah. And so these girls now they're relying on him because they see him as this power figure, almost like this in a way like a deity over what they love and what they're learning. He's teaching them. He's now treating them special, more special than the other people, which kind of makes them yeah, a leader. But I'm saying these women are probably also from backgrounds that like they don't you know. Maybe they come from broken homes. Or they, like oh, I, said, I don't they, think they, so. No, but I'm sure a lot of them, I know he got young. They get like 18, 19, 20. So they're not like, they're not yeah. like 35-year-old women who've, who've seen the ways of the world. Some of them, though. I know. But that's, I, I feel like the selection process, though, is, is what's impressive. Well, he just went with whoever's hot is what he basically did. Well, no, he, he did do that, but I, I love his one, his one defense of, it, of him. Of his, like, his like claim to say, oh, I didn't rape these women. He was like, he's like, oh, look at them. They're ugly. I wouldn't have raped them. Oh, that's you horrible. that Because they weren't. That, yeah, they weren't. But they the, were but, really hot. But the balls to say, look at them. That's of course so they're rude. ugly. I would never have sex and with them. And he's like, oh, I don't have to. I don't have to ask I those can, pigs. It's like, yeah. I can get these other women. It's like, wow, dude. He's that's, such a that's piece that's of shit. That's brave. He's <laughs> such a piece of trash. He's living well, his truth, And the Jeff. thing he's was, but like, not only, yeah, his truth is fiction. It's fucked up. But what. What I noticed about it too is like, so he did all those things that I was just saying, like he, he like did all these things, but then also they're relying on him fin financially because oh, they're yeah. so far in this, this thing, they're so far down this wormhole that they're like, well, I do want to open a studio and I do want to like do this stuff. And, uh, you know, like they're relying on him. So then he makes a move and then they're like, now what do I do? Well, I can't what? like leave. And he'd do like really weird things where he would make it seem like normal. Like, hey, come into my room and watch a movie with me. And then they'd be like, oh, that's kind of weird, but okay. And then they'll do it. And then he'd be like, massage my hand. And then they'll massage his hand. And the, so like they're massage now wrestling with like, yeah, they're, yeah, now they're wrestling like. I think it's just good sales tactics. I mean, he, get, he like inches them in. And then all of a sudden they look up like, oh shit, I'm 20 grand in the hole. I'm trying to start a business with this guy. Yeah. And now he's making a move on me, but he holds the keys it's to my so financial unfair, future. Yeah. What do I do? It's yeah. they, religion does that too. Like that's how they get you to, you know, they sort of. It's sort of you know, like give you breadcrumbs to, to get you closer in. Scientology. And, what, yeah. and then once you're in there, it's like, all right, well, I'm too. It's too late now. I'm yeah. fucking in bed with this thing. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go all the way. That's the beauty of Scientology. That's, it is. Uh, is. Is that like, uh, or not the beauty, but the evilness <laughs> of it? Is like with Christianity, you go, hey, Adam and Eve's talking snake. They give you the, the con up thing. front. Jesus was coming around like a long time later, and then he like healed people. He's a good guy. Love everyone. He gets crowned on a sin. Gets yeah. crucified. There's one God. Forgives blah, your blah, sin. Blah. You, know, you know all this stuff. And if you listen to that and go, oh, this is bullshit, you can just leave. But if you like that and you believe that and you really think that that's what something you believe, then you're in. 
And that's all it has to be. Where with Scientology, they're like, we're just about positivity. And you're like, oh, I'm about positivity. Yeah. And then four years later, like, you know, we're also, we're also about, uh, about, you know, service. We gotta, we gotta, you gotta give this much time. You gotta buy these books. And you're like, oh, okay, well, it's five years. Yeah. And then 20 years later, like, we're from aliens. We're, yeah. And you're like, what? Yeah, you're a quarter million in, 20 Dude, years, like, I've what the fuck just happened? 20, what are you talking about? Why didn't you lead with aliens? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you so no up? one would sign up. It's really like the old bait and switch. Yeah, a 25 well, year bait and switch. Got hoodwinked. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> what do you mean aliens, dude? I've, I've been like given, I guess I'm in. Oh, also, your daughter isn't a Scientology. You can't talk to her no more. What? Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember Paul Haggis in an interview about that. He was like, uh, in that, on that great HBO documentary, I think it was Going Clear. He's like, uh, he's like yeah, so like, I'm whatever. I'm the two million in, 25 years later, they tell me this shit. And I'm wondering if it's like trying to trick me. Like, oh, if I believe it, they're going to kick me out. So I got to not believe it. Like he thought like, he's like, oh, he maybe they're trying a test. He's a like, test. He's like Cause, this, cause, it, cause it seemed ludicrous. Yeah. And after all this time, this is what was in the book that they they, they didn't show me until, you know, I was, I was too deep in. Yeah. That's... Like, so, so I tell him like, oh, I don't believe it. So I could stay in. He's like, I didn't know what to think. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> like, that's yeah, how... they're like beating up people. I mean, like it was cr- oh, enslaving like... people. Yeah. Like swabbing the deck. Like it's fucking 1880. <laughs> it's like... Insane. like they had like little areas where they just beat the shit out of dudes. <laughs> Like it's crazy. Yeah, they had the Royal Rumble room and the little trailer. It's insane. That. They, they, they could do musical chairs. Yeah, like, like I don't a know what's going on. I just chairs. literally got my ass beat by a guy. They played Gloria Gaynor, I Will Survive, and they would just do musical chairs. Who's like, the one guy who kind of looked like a, like a crappier version of Tom Cruise? The, the main guy? Dave Miscovich. Oh, Dave yeah. Miscovich. And he would just come in and punch him a few times and then like leave. And like, what, what, the leader just punched me? Like, you just want to get some licks in? It's insane. <laughs> we got to be careful. We're in fucking, we're in Scientology. Not time, afraid of him at all. Oh, yeah, no. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Scientology. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was this nice, sweet thing that uh, John Travolta was plugging, and then it turns out it's all uh, like fuckery. It's like literally yeah. hurting people and brainwashing my <laughs> acting friends. Yeah. I don't like it's crazy. it. I'm not afraid of it. It's crazy. That was a gateway into the Hollywood at some point, though, right? It's kind of like AA meetings. I feel like if you go to the right AA meeting in this town, you can you can get some roles. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, any of these small, like weird little niche communities, you know. I think that, that yeah, the, in the beginning it was like that, where you could get, like, you got in a circle, and they're like, oh, he's a Scientologist, they're like, it's a work yeah, together, like a little, and yeah, like a little community, but I don't think it's like that anymore. No. I think the, the, the veil, veil lifted. absolutely. But it's crazy how it's still kicking. <laughs> like, Dude, after all this- like, like, three billion dollars worth of property. They're not going any fucking and, and the thing is, And they're but, still tax exempt. And here's the thing, though. It's like, as, I understand if, like, oh, if you're in it, and you're, like, sticking with it, but that the fact that people oh, are still new people oh, yeah. going to it is- well, Badly. it's because there's still dummies. Yeah, <laughs> human beings yeah. are still so, yeah. needy and want to fit in and yeah. whatever. You know, like, and don't we think like screw loose? How's the KKK still a thing? <laughs> yeah, doing well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doing well. In yeah. fact, this might be a banner year for them. Yeah, <laughs> it's very weird that like anything <laughs> could keep forging forward like that. It's just, yeah, I don't know. It kind of shows that if you just stay the Shocking. course, yeah, it's like this podcast. You know, just stay the course. Let's ride it out. It's gonna, it's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I believe in it. Hopefully. Uh, Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> Tony. <laughs> that was so uh, sanguine, Tony. You're very... <laughs> so, last episode. Did we talk about it on air or off air? No, we didn't talk about anything on okay, air. Okay, so off air, listeners, uh, me and Tony are gushing about what is my new favorite show on Disney+, Plus, uh, The yeah. Mandalorian. So good. So good. If you like Star Wars, you'll love it. And if you don't like Star Wars, I think you'll still like it. If you I'm give a big it, Star Wars guy, and I've enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, it's like, fun. Because like, I've watched them all, all the stars. I'm never. I'm not like religious about it. I like them as movies. are just fun. Yeah. But that's a good show. And It's, it's, it's different. It, it's not anything like... The Star Wars movies. I, I mean, mean, it is, but it's it's like its own. It's like a space western. Right. It's like a cowboy. Yeah. Exactly. It's, that's the best it's way Clint, to describe it. It's Clint Eastwood. I like that they you stand know? alone. I, that, that's a big thing for me. Like, it, if you're like even the Joker, like any new series, like it's helpful to have watched like the other parts of it. But I yeah. feel like they shouldn't need to to enjoy if it's done sure. well. Yeah, if it's done well. It and there's be like a thousand own. Easter eggs in these episodes too. <laughs> yeah. Like I didn't know about until I saw this like thing on YouTube that Justin showed me. But um, but that being said, so me and Tony are just kind of talking about it and gushing about it. There was a few things I didn't like, but it had nothing to do with the show. The things I didn't like was that some idiot on the internet like spoiled, like literally within hours of the first episode coming out, like someone on Twitter had already like screen grabbed all these things that ruined the first episode for me yeah. so that was something I meant. but that's nobody's fault except like stupid internet people and then the other thing I didn't like is I didn't understand the timeline but that's just me not knowing when it was and I asked one smart friend and he told me and so my, my only criticisms had nothing to do with the actual product right but then and now on, I see why I'm like 
gung ho like first showing Avengers like like yes yeah, so you like, don't get spoilers exactly. well like, with the I, internet any fucking will meme will, will destroy will kill mo- like if they, all the memes with Yoda would have fucking blew apart the, oh, yeah. the reveal well, like, and the, yeah, the first, 10 seconds of it being out you'd it was only out for like an hour yeah, yeah. and a girl like literally screen grabbed baby Yoda yeah. and then goes uh, oh my god Mandalorian is so good I just gush about this cute little That's Yoda so he's annoying. so cute and then she wrote um, A-T-T-N uh, spoiler and you're like yeah, but I've already seen the picture, you dumb shit, and I just read what you wrote. Yeah. I hate you. I hate you so much. That's a bump. That bumps me out because when I watch that first episode, like at the end of that episode, when the Blue reveal happens, I literally, like my jaw dropped. Like, right. like I had a visceral reaction. I was like, no way. Like, right. this is so, it'd be so interesting. Five minutes into the episode, or maybe four and a half minutes into the episode, when he goes, There is one bounty. Yeah, and you're like, Oh, no, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh great. Yeah. 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 You know exactly. He's like, I don't have a puck for it. And I was yeah. like, I already know, Carl Weathers. I already know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. this dumb girl on Twitter screen grabbed Baby Yoda yeah, yeah, way yeah. too soon. Yeah. Uh, but, anyways. If uh, after the, we're we're talking about after the episode with Christiana, and I said I said to Tony I said, "Oh man, are you into it? Are you like enjoying it? Do you like it? Blah blah." blah. And Tony goes, "Do you want to know what I think is going to happen?" And I said, "No." <laughs> yeah. and he goes, "Dude, I don't know." And I was like, "I know, but I know you are really smart and good at this kind of crap, and that you're probably going to be right. And then I'm going to watch the episode, and it's going to spoil it for me." And then he's like, "Okay, fine, fine, I won't." Yeah. But he was right, and I was. I was right that he'd be right, and I was also <laughs> yeah. right to not ask him is what the fuck he thinks yeah. because you're too good at that kind of stuff. Tony's yeah. banned from from giving he uh, advice. Four different parts of that third episode. Um, and I wouldn't have protected any of it. So I was just enjoying yeah. the episode like a dummy. Yeah, I don't know. I just look at things differently, like trying to be in the industry, you know, yeah. like being as a writer. Like I just kind of predicted Here's what, what I would do. Exactly, yeah. yeah, that's like that's a big reason why I love this. Uh, I think about the same time, I think with Star Wars, like episode eight gets a lot of hate. And like I, I see it. Like it's not my favorite Star Wars, the, yeah. the last one. But I think a lot of people's problems with it is that it didn't pan out the way they pictured. We've talked about that a lot. You know? So, and and I, I do that. Like, that's like my predictions on right. this episode. I was like, oh, that's, I'd love to see it go this direction because I think it'd be interesting from a viewer's standpoint. So that's why I predicted it. But if it doesn't go that way, it's not like, yeah. people are like, fuck, this show sucks. That's, like, that's going to be my- I understand that John Favreau is more talented than I am. Like, I- you know, I get it. Well, it's, and he's not necessarily, but it's his. Well, I mean, you it's know. not your story. It's his right, story. Right, right, right. Uh, I think that that's like with every inch of success I get, that's going to be like my message to like everyone is, hey, hey, this is art, and uh, you know, not everything's going to be the way you did it. Like, right. like it's not a bad idea just because it's not the idea you had. Sure. You know, like there's ideas you didn't have, and those aren't your ideas, and people can do whatever they want with them. People always think, well, I, I would have done it this way. Well. Yeah, you would have. Then do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what are you talking about? You make your own yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Just because that's not what you would have done doesn't make it bad. Yeah. Oh, here's what I would have liked. Okay, well, guess what? That didn't happen. John Favreau's got it, but it's phenomenal. I hope do you, I hope you don't remember my Stranger Things predictions then. Because um, I, I went into I've it. fully given up on Stranger Things. Okay. Yeah. I enjoy it. Because I'm, I'm pretty confident. It's still that's going. What, that's the way I it's, know. it's going. My prediction. Episode, but I won't no, talk the about. season one was phenomenal. Season two was phenomenal. Season three, I couldn't even get through three episodes. I was That's just like, where no, I stalled out. Yeah, no thanks. All right. Yeah. The Mandalorian. They, so good. they got a little too cutesy for my taste. Mm-hmm. I liked it when it was dark and it was and it was like we were falling in love with these kid characters and and then now it's just kind of like uh, this. It's turned into like Saved by the Bell with an occasional <laughs> monster. Like yeah. I don't need it. It's corny dog shit. Fucking Mario Lopez pops up. <laughs> I'd make it better, actually. I mean, at this point, they'll do anything. They don't give a shit. Is there a no. hotel room Mario Lopez is not hosting the? Ch- the t- <laughs> I mean, like, he's in every hotel room. He, right? he might be the most watched man on television. Is if he still doing hotel it? Room. He's the host of every hotel room. No, but is he still? Because he did. He had that falling out. Oh, did he? He had a falling out with the chain. Uh-oh. Well, he didn't. It's not a falling out. I shouldn't use that term. I don't think, oh, they, I don't think there was a huge blowback that on that. Good. I think it kind of blew over. Oh, oh was this the? Uh, yeah, I remember this thing. He was a. He made a comment that transgender people didn't enjoy. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I think thought, it blew over. And, and you know, you know how many hotel rooms they book. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck no. Well, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> that is something. Here's a here's a risky a room. Here's don't a ask. risky take on my part. Oh. You ready? Let's end some fucking don't say anything. Careers. I, have to edit I don't even out. have one. So let's go. Uh, well, let's go. I don't think we have to edit it out. Okay, good. I'm so. Put it on me. Blame me for it. Get me some fucking heat. Here's the thing. <laughs> Jeff Dye loves all the people. I say that every goddamn every night in my act. <laughs> I say it all the time. I have to let every. That is my message. I love everyone. 
Uh, what I'm annoyed by is this uh, this strange internet like obsession with like transgender people can do no wrong and that you can't say anything about them. You're not allowed to ask questions about them. You're not. It's like, dude. Yes, the transgender people are part of our society who I love, but they're not like above the law. They're not like they're completely without flaw or they're completely without being ever could be criticized and can't be questioned and can't be talked about. They're humans like us who are open to criticism, things like that. Also, not to mention all of these weird liberal people that I'm friends with, like the really extreme liberals, they don't even know any transgender people. Oh, dude, I'm looking at your me. Instagram. You're so stinking <laughs> supportive of someone you've never posted with. You don't know any transgender people. You're using it as some manipulative way to like, look how accepting I am. I'm even accepting of the transgender but yeah. you don't post of any. You don't have any friends there. Yeah. There's nope. like seven transgender people in the world, and you don't know any of them. <laughs> so get off your high horse. Well, like, I love them too, but I'm not going out going like, oh, you bigots are being... It's like, you, you live in Montana, Courtney. You don't know a transgendered person. It's just your way of making it seem like you're not a racist or xenophobe or bigot. You're trying to get social points. And what's yeah. funny is that they'll... they'll like you're da- absolutely right. They'll be like supporting, you know, some transgenders, you know... It's fake support, what I call yeah. them, you know, just, just saying something. And then the next post on Instagram will be, a, will be them at a gender reveal party. It's like, well, which one is it? Sure. Do you actually believe in like gender not like a non binary community in a spectrum, or do you believe in a gender that you're at the at the party Those for, for this Those parents are misgendering that fetus. It I didn't know. get they're, to choose. They really didn't. Right. <laughs> they really so didn't. They're, they're playing by whatever crazy rules they want to look to look more accepted. It's yeah. always selfish. Yeah. They're all, they're all, like even like um, the gay pride stuff. Like, dude. I actually have gay friends. I bet most of the people that actually at this point, there's a lot of gay people. I bet most people have some gay friends. Yeah. But I will say it's more about them getting the credit of how accepting they are of the gay yeah, person. That's my biggest. It's not about the gay friends, about their yeah, their social look credit at me. And by having a gay friend. Yeah. Did you see that with, I'm so supportive yeah, with, of the gay with people? That, like, with the, shut with, up. With all these parades, you know, and everything like great, and and like the women's marches and stuff, like it's fantastic that you want yeah. to do that. That's awesome. They like, made go, it about themselves. Go be a part. But then it's like it's always like. Look at these nineteen Instagram posts of me at the thing. Yes. It's like it's like Selfies if a tree if a tree falls in the forest, like, no one's not... there to hear it, doesn't make a sound. <laughs> right. If you go to the fucking parade and no one sees it, you're still there. Absolutely. You're still supporting. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't need to like get the points from it. Like yeah. I'm not gonna sit there and be like, oh, yeah, it's nice. Very look you're a good look person who was now. there, and look who look who else was there. When that's the one day a year you even say anything about it. Which also isn't you're it? You're not living that yeah, your whole you, life. Yeah, you're if there you put a rainbow the background day. on your fucking on your on your pro- pro- profile picture, you're not a goddamn. You're not in a movement. Right. Yeah. You know, you're just posting something and sitting on your ass like every, like the rest of us. You're not. That actually should be the movement. Is that social media is fun? It isn't important. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. so guess what? Here's like, the thing. It's good to like if you want to use that as a platform. You know, and you're, like you're posting at your at the parade and like trying to use it to spread the message great but that's the one time a year you do it to get the points versus like actually being about those movements right 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 your whole life you know i was thinking about this in uh, in policy like politics is it like i posted one political thing because somebody made a little screen thing yeah and i got a little bit of heat for it and uh, some people really enjoyed it i don't care either way that's my real take but here's the thing about here's the thing about that is that like you're not political just because you argue with everyone on Facebook all day about politics. <laughs> so if if the only thing you're doing that's political is annoying everyone about how much you love yeah. your side, then you're not political. You're just kind of like informed. I guess you could say you're informed. Uh, but that And you're still I'd just one that. measly little vote and you're not doing anything but kind of stirring up the pot and yeah. riling you up your friends. you start a community organization? Yeah. Are, are you driving people to the polls? What are you doing? Shut the fuck up. Exactly. What are you doing? <laughs> exactly. Ask <laughs> yourself this and if you're if you're open-minded and you're hearing this consider what are you actually doing besides just going while you're at work wasting work time and not getting uh not getting anything done or maybe you could say you know what maybe maybe jeff's right maybe all i'm doing is doing these long rants that's agitating my older generation uncles and and aunts or vice versa you're trying to trigger millennials what in your actual life are you willing to do that is that is more than just typing words that no one's listening to Right? Yeah. 
Are you eating different? Are you helping the environment? Are you uh, are you donating your time and money to like veterans with mental problems? Are are you like what are you actually doing in your life other than just going? Well, I got a Facebook and I like to argue with my my gay teenage yeah. son about how he's wrong. Like you're not it's doing just anything. Whacking a hornet's yeah. nest is what it is when you when you make those long fucking posts on Facebook. You're just yeah. whacking the hornet to see what happens. Social media they should be fun. Them. Let me let me go poke the, let me go poke the anthill and see if I can stir up some shit. I'm bored at work today. Social, That's really what it boils social down media to. should be fun. It shouldn't be. Uh, it's not important. Yeah, it I hope be, you know it's not important. People jumping on tables, puppies. Not the way we use it. It's not know, important. It can't, it can't be important, but unfortunately, we don't use it that way. Yeah, it should be fun and important in the right ways. In the right ways, but it's just nobody. Like even if Rihanna posted a thing like, "Hey, you know, I'm a Democrat." So it doesn't do anything. That even seventy-five million uh, views and likes is still isn't important. If she says, "Here's how it could be important." If Rihanna says, "Hey, check out this GoFundMe. This sweet little girl, you know, is going. She needs a heart transplant, and it's really urgent." And blah blah blah. Hey, here's the link if you want to help. Yeah, when and then stuff that like that happens. It's fantastic. Twenty million uh, likes and views. That's it. That's a, yeah. that she's done something. There. Right, yeah, right, or, or right, right. I'll give out a Not free sign. Opinion. Yeah, I'll give out a free signed album for two hours to anyone who comes down to register to vote. Right. I mean, there you it, go. It, it takes no. It takes two hours of her time yeah. and, and 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 almost no money. I mean, I'll sign whatever you want. Yeah, because social media register. does have like special powers at times. Like people, are like I'm looking for my long lost sure. son, and then it's like everyone posts that, and it like gets viral, right. and then it's like amazing. Right. You know, things can be. Yeah. But when but, you're just like <laughs> yeah. saying like an opinion, you know, oh well, Trump's racist. You're like, well, well done. Now you've made all the Trump people upset, and you're gonna get all these things, and they're just gonna be pissed off, and they're gonna argue. You've you've done nothing. Yeah. yeah. How much ice agree, water though? was wasted versus money donated to that fucking the, the ice bucket challenge back in oh the day? Oh my god. Okay, yeah. I, I don't even know the name of the disease they were trying to raise money for. Yeah. But everyone knows the ice bucket challenge. We're wasting water, and no one's donating. Like yeah. what? A, what a fucking. Well, one thing we can all agree on is Epstein didn't kill himself, right? Oh, he definitely didn't I don't know anything about it. <laughs> I really don't know anything about that's it. That's just the one, Ooh, like, that seems to be, that. I haven't looked into it. It seems to be the one bipartisan, or it's not even bipartisan, but I mean, it's like one theories. is kind of like everyone's I'm kind of on the same page. But this one, I like, so where where exactly do you get your information on something like that? I don't know. I where mean, do you get reliable that's information that, on something like that? In this day and age, that's the tough part. Yeah. So, like, I, there's reliable information about tons of conspiracies. In fact, the best conspiracy doesn't say this is what I think happened. Uh, the best conspiracy, uh, like, let's take 9-11, for example, because it's a big one. Most people know about it. It's been years. So the the smart conspiracy theorists don't say, oh, here's what happened in 9-11. They say what they're telling us couldn't have been true. They pick so apart we don't the facts. Know what happened, they pick apart facts that already stand. But we know that when they said that this was a plane that went through the Pentagon and it looks more like a missile and there's no wreckage of a plane, it doesn't make any sense. We're not saying, hey, that's a missile. We're saying it's not a plane. Doesn't seem like a plane. A plane. Yeah. So because and here's why it couldn't have been a plane. In fact, uh, the one the 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 plane that went through the ten towers and all those different things. Every single plane, they couldn't find a single engine. They couldn't find the black box. And and the argument was from the news and the press was like, oh well, it was so hot and so much fuel that it all melted, dude. That's never They're happened in last. the history of an airplane. <laughs> yeah. Engines They're built to stop. It doesn't and make not any do sense. <laughs> the black box. That's its whole premise. Is that you it can't. It's melt. not to disappear when yeah, the plane what are you explodes. Talking about. So <laughs> I I wouldn't even argue it's conspiracy. It's just latent evidence. It's latent um, fuckery. So. All the conspiracy theorists that are smart would just say, oh, all we know is that what they told us isn't true. That's yeah. all we know. Which conspiracy do you think is the most likely, or which, I guess it's not the conspiracy that's false, but which story do you think that, you know, of the famous conspiracy theories is, is the most likely to be, not be true as it is currently told? Like JFK. You know, JFK, JFK yeah, is the I one think that one is so blatant that it's not the, whatever. Yeah, that's unanimously it's not the full story. Not even a conspiracy but I anymore. Think Epstein <laughs> might be a close second because this is. I mean, yeah. I don't know much about him. So uh, just quick background: Jeffrey Epstein is some you know uh, multi-millionaire, billionaire financier who um, had all these political ties and ended up uh, was like a hedge fund manager. And he built this this beautiful like you know vacation home down in the in the uh, I think it's in the Virgin Islands or somewhere in the somewhere some, in the, some in the Caribbean yeah. bought an island put a put a beautiful home on it and his thing was young kind of like the Neverland Ranch <laughs> yeah exactly but with women with young girls instead of young boys it doesn't change anything <laughs> fair enough, fair the, enough. The, the gender of the children yeah, being yeah. raped less is chimpanzees important. more rape I don't know what to say that's a Catholic <laughs> Church argument yeah well, exactly. well they were girls this, at least yeah, these it, ones were girls you're like it's, no it's, what it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> They're eight. What are you talking the about? Church, that doesn't matter the that Catholic Church wishes they could make that argument. They, they've made that argument. 
With whip, they had a lot so of So there was a boys. little, it was These mostly boys. Yeah. And there was a one guy, uh, Father McGregor, and they did a whole documentary about him. And one of the arguments from the diocese was like, well, at least those were girls. Like, what, what are you talking yeah, about? Exactly. Yeah. still raping children. Yeah, but Fuck go ahead. Them. But uh, so anyway, so he had this, is this beautiful palace down there, and he would host like foreign dignitaries and, and politicians. Um, and then he'd have all these young girls around. And the theory is that he would arrange for uh, underage women to have sex with. These powerful politicians. How and underage are we talking? Uh, <laughs> anywhere from you know thirteen to seventeen. So, Jeepers. Yeah. yeah. But why would that be hot? If you're that rich and stuff, like get me like one of these twenty-seven-year-old Instagram models. Get me one of them. <laughs> yeah, get me, get me one of these porn stars for a fucking get, yeah. 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 What are you arranging a thirteen-year-old for? That's uh, disgusting. Yeah. Very, very bizarre. I think it's power. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's gross just because you can get away with it. Just, oh, I can do whatever I want. That's that kind of weird. Yeah, they get off on that these, kind of shit. These fucking Sega reticulants, bro, that just like want to feast on. Don't put yeah, this on shapeshifters. <laughs> shapeshifters. Don't put this on lizard people. <laughs> Maybe lizard people are really nice, and you don't know. Yeah, maybe like the nicest people in the world. Yeah. Like, like, well, I, I want to do all these nice things, but they'll never accept it because I'm a yeah. lizard people. So let me pretend to be Gandhi. Let me look like this, and Gandhi was a lizard person. Gandhi, but he was uh, super nice. Like, what if the Zeta Reticulans are right now? Like, you know how these fucking humans are. They're always Zeta sticking Reticulans. their arms inside of their buttholes and then like <laughs> coughing it up and puking it out. That's what Earthlings do. And we're like, no, dude, no, like, yeah. no one's ever done that. It can't <laughs> physically impossible. But. Uh, uh, yeah, so he would invite over all these people from the left and the right, and from like so he had like Trump spinning it down his island, fucking so is Clinton, and so is like Prince Andrew, Bill Clinton, yeah. or Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Hillary, okay. has, Hillary, you know she she's not she's asexual, children. she's Pat, a robot, <laughs> just patting him on the patting him on the back about it. <laughs> she's just a little power hungry robot. Yeah, um, but uh, so like so basically every every political party in persuasion wanted this guy dead. Um, he got a he got because because he, he got caught because he got dirt because I mean, he has all this dirt on all them. I mean he oh, arranged yeah, for all these yeah. sex parties, um, so. He'd already gotten caught once and got a slap on the wrist. He got like a year in jail for um, for sex, sexual misconduct with a minor, um, but it was like house arrest. So he basically was just staying at his giant mansion in Palm yeah, Springs for a year. Dope. And all right, it's, it's good to be good to be king. Uh, but then he got caught again, and he and this time it was like a big federal case, and he was gonna, they're going to make him testify and all this shit. Oh. So he actually, so he almost tried to kill himself once in while he was in uh, uh, jail in Southern District of New York. So he's on suicide watch. So then they put him on suicide watch, and then he turned up dead. Yeah. They say he hung himself. The two but, guards falsified jail records. They disappeared for two hours. It's like, all right. You argue, the, cam the cameras stopped working. The cameras stopped oh, working. Really? He had no cellmate. When you're on suicide watch, they make sure you have a cellmate. No cellmate. So I was like, all right. So somebody arranged to have him in a, in a box by himself. For two hours. Yeah, exactly. With no cameras, With no, no cameras. Because I would make the argument uh, before all the things you just said, that no cameras, no guards, no cellmate. Before you'd say that, you could make the argument that he was so afraid that someone's going to kill him that he just kills himself. No, sure. I'm sure. Yeah, he, but, or that he didn't want to be in prison because he's, he's a rich white guy. He might have wanted to kill himself. Yeah, for he sure. He maybe wanted to. But that, yeah. But, but then the fact that all that stuff, he had a great uh, motive for them to have the footage of him killing himself. Yes. Because then they go, look, I mean, we didn't, you yeah. know. That's interesting. So I, that's that's the, that's and now they're you know even even uh, William Barr the the Attorney General of the United like the big the, the top cop in the country was like yeah this is and what I'm, was I'm a colossal the, screw up and they were trying to guard, safeguard him to find the out the craziest part about this whole Clinton's thing early. was when Hillary Clinton and Chelsea Clinton went on the Daily Show with Trevor Noah and they answered this and he straight up asked <laughs> Trevor Noah straight up to her said so I think the thing that the world wants to know how did you kill Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> And what a great question. Great. <laughs> How did you kill him? And she kind of just like laughed it off. That's a With her really, maniacal laugh. <laughs> that's that's a really good question. <laughs> crazy. How did you kill? <laughs> also, why would they presume that Hillary did it? Well, because like, why would he ask that to her? Because Bill's involved. Bill was, uh, yeah. Bill was, on, was on his private plane 26 separate times. Oh, and, on uh, Epstein. And I travel yeah. with you all over the country. I've yeah. been on a fucking plane with you 26 times. Yeah, man. that's crazy. Like, that's a little crazy. Um, uh, yeah, they're they're just you know good pals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so weird. Yeah. That's one of the reasons. Actually, I, I got to be honest. One of the what has Bill said about it since? Not I mean, a fucking. Not, no one's, he, no one's he, saying anything. He hid from the media after his wife got fucking ousted in that last election. Oh, Smart yeah. guy. I, I feel like I don't know. I, I have a weird affinity for Bill. I mean, he, he's he's flawed in a way that I get it. It's like, all right, dude, he's a fucking pussy hound. You know, yeah, I, he's just I know a those guys. Likeable pussy hound. Yeah, he's just like, all right. <laughs> like, he's, he's like, he can't not hit on chicks. And it's, yeah. not, it's not the worst quality. It's not a great quality, but it's not the worst quality to have. He's not like nefarious like Dick Cheney. I feel like Dick Cheney always has like a, some, some, you know, some, some scheme going on. Bill Clinton yeah. just wants to get laid. 
I mean, clearly that's why he became president, to get more, more pussy. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Dick Cheney just wanted weird. to be president, but he just knew he couldn't be. What kind of sociopath do you have to be to want to be president? Think about that. Like, how fucking narcissistic, how in your oh. own, like, full of your own bullshit that you want, I want to be number one in the world. Yeah. So that's that, not even, it doesn't seem like a good gig at all. It seems horrible, dude. I remember once, you know, this, this might speak volumes to me, but one time I was like, they're like, who's the richest person in the world? I was like, young, didn't know stuff. I was like, I don't know, the president? And they're like, no, dude. And I was like, it's not the president? And they're like, no. Not even close, There's yeah. like lawyers that make way more than the president. Like yeah. the dentists. Like, there's truck people drivers that, yeah, that make more than the yeah, president. I make more than the president. Yeah, exactly. But here's the thing. I didn't, uh, the day I heard that, like as a kid, like I think at the time, I'm, you know, we were young, so it was like 100 grand a year or something like that, like uh, at the well, time. It's been, I think it's been like $500,000 a year for forever. Well, for, for a long for time? For a long, long time. Oh, then. That's not what I thought. But anyways, I remember Still going, oh, much. then I don't want to be president. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, even at a young age, like, ugh. Like, yeah. Isn't that the All job? That don't you that... want to get the most paying job? Yeah. And I was like, if you're hey, working, don't you want to get paid for How it? much do teachers make? They're like, not a lot. I don't want to be a teacher then either. <laughs> <laughs> but they also work far less than the president. So there is balance of pay in that. Yeah. You would think that, I mean, that has got to be the most involved job in the world and to be paid that little. I thought about what, that teacher? before. No, no, president. president. No, president. I think, I think the reason it was set at like $500,000 because it used to be like 2% of GDP of like the gross domestic product of the country. And $500,000 back in 1820 was like fucking $500 million. It was right. an ins insane amount of money. But now it's, that's not, it's not that anymore. It's not pegged to that. So it's just the same number. It's like, well, if the president, if the, pre I feel like the, if the president made half a billion dollars a year, he'd be, he'd be a really hard guy to bribe. Because once you get the job, you don't need anybody else's fucking money. Yeah, I guess that's true. You know? but, and we could spend but, $2 billion but, a year for the president. But like, then, but then you, cheap. you're seeing it on the front end where people are like, want, they're, they're doing the nefarious shit to become president. Yeah. Which already should. happens. Yeah. But it would be but even more. Because the then, then it's a rat race to like, I want that half a billion know, and dollars. And that's always been my theory because I've learned over my years that people are flawed and like people are selfish. And even the best people are, even you know, when they're desperate, they'll do whatever it takes to survive or do what's best for them. And I've said this, I think, a bunch of times, but. You don't want cops making heaps and heaps of money. You don't want teachers making heaps and heaps of money because it brings in the wrong people. Yeah. It, you don't. I need people doing these jobs because they believe in it and it's honorable. You can't like pay them nothing, but yeah. you definitely can't. Like, if what if a cop made five million dollars a year? All these people would want to be cops, and they're only just chasing this five million. They're not going to take it's it. Tough. Yes. So I guess it's true. People are corruptible. So no matter where, at what point you're at, no matter yeah. what, there's money to be made. Someone's going to do something fucked up to get it. I guess I, I don't want a guy who's going yeah. to be a cop for the money or going to be a no. teacher for the money. Absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, I'm, you know, I'm, it doesn't make them take more pride in it. They just go, oh, it's five million dollars like a, a year. Like I us, get paid. It's know, like, like us on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> We're here for the love, <laughs> love of the game. the game, baby. Yeah. No <laughs> ads, no sponsors. <laughs> we we love it. Just the we listener. Love. For now. For We're now. here for you, baby. Which <laughs> reminds me, subscribe to the Patreon, but we're going, we can't, we're <laughs> going broke. Do you I, think, haven't uh, eaten, <laughs> I haven't eaten in weeks. So. Yeah. It's out of order. Do uh, Do you think the president should be able to, to get those like half a million dollar speaking engagement fees no. after they become president? I think that's fucked up. Because that's just delayed bribery. I think the president should make zero dollars a year because guess what if you're already getting boosted by all these companies that you seem to make a priority like the nra and oil and nabisco and all if if you're already getting all that money from these things and it's affecting your policy where you are afraid to even do anything that might agitate animal agriculture then, yeah. then guess what you don't need to get paid also. Well, yeah. why do they need to get paid at all? They're not right. paying rent. Uh, they're not make, going grocery shopping. They're not, you know. It's true. What, what, what is the salary for? Dude, like, shouldn't heard... you just be able to live free for a year? You know, Especially four if you're years? already rich. Like, that's fantastic. They're getting so much money. I, I would love to just, like, not, be, not have to pay rent and not have to, like, buy groceries. Like, I wouldn't need a paycheck Dude, if that's the, the point. Has like, it so good. To... They fly two Jumbo 747s. Everywhere the president goes, right. so they don't know which one he's actually going right, to go in. Right, right. So, so like that's how big of the of a budget the president's like travel and expense. Like he's already spending hundreds of millions of dollars a year just living. Like he gets the free residence, he gets two fucking giant seven forty sevens. I guess his idea, surgery, he doesn't pay for shit. The do premise shit. is like they still have bills and they still have things what that like bills, what? dude. Yeah, what bills? Well, their bills don't stop just because they are now staying at the White House. Yeah, but they have that. They have all their other houses that they've been paying for for years. Cable and well, uh, Don, water. If, if and Donald Trump's really a billionaire, he can afford it. He well, doesn't no, need the, the five hundred thousand dollars from the government. The, the, I don't all know. the the money that you have to pay yearly now doesn't stop just because you got a new place that's free. I don't know. You still have all the same bills and kids going to college and like mouths to feed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Theoretically, I get it. Yeah. It's like, so yeah. it makes them. Well, maybe that should just be a, a part of it. That should be the salary. Yeah. 
You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I think president sucks. What I, I th- have you ever heard my theory? I have a conspiracy theory about the White House. Oh, let's hear it. I believe that the president doesn't ever, 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 ever stay there. They might take meetings there. They might do some work there, but I don't believe they sleep there. I don't believe that. It's too easy of a mark. Doesn't make any sense. The, the White House is nicknamed the most famous address in America. That's what they call it because it's it's this place you go to America like that's a destination, like a tourist site, right? Now, what? Is the safest thing in the world. Anonymity. Yeah. That's why they're called the secret <clears throat> service. Or that's why they play little games. Which plane is he on? Yeah, which car which is he in? Which car is he in? Now you're going to tell us that he sleeps in there? the fucking most famous address in America? No way, dude. Yeah. I believe there's either yeah. tunnels or I believe there's other places. Like Donald Trump, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, or not Hillary, but like um, whoever's been president, yeah. would be safer in my apartment than the White House because nobody's expecting the president to, to live in my here. apartment. Yeah. And so I just, I have a theory that none of the presidents have ever stayed at the White yeah, House. That's probably, I think there's an intricate tunnel system, yeah. I'm yeah. sure. And they have burned down the White House before, so you can't get there. I mean, dude, fucking, I think last year some woman just, oh, some guy just jumped <laughs> the fence and ran in. Right. And they like, got he, he, like, he, like got, he got past the lawn into the building before they, they grabbed him. Which is insane to think that you can run across like a 200 yard lawn into the president's, yeah. essentially the president's home, and no one shot you before you I got to the front door. I think snipers and everything that are up there and all Just the security sleeping. is basically be. Well, I think they're real, and it's because there's really sensitive things in the White House, and there's yeah, also and there's very, other, very, yeah, very important people. people. And yeah. also, it's a pretty risky job. Like, if there was an, any attack on the White House, like yeah. they're the casualties, not the Absolutely. important yeah. people. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I just this uh, a couple of days ago. Apparently, like Secret Service body men that actually are on the president. Don't carry firearms because they're they're trained to just jump in front of the president as yeah. opposed to pull out a weapon when they, look at the president getting attacked. So like guys that are that hardened, they're not fucking around. I'm, t- I'm surprised yeah. we're even able to, able to get that close. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, I bet that they, they just thought like, is this some jackass running towards the place? Yeah, guy, like I bet you, if he had a knife in his hand or like a gun, that dude's killed within two feet of yeah. getting on the lawn. But I think they're just bet going if it was like a Baltimore cop. He'd have shot him when he was running away. <laughs> Baltimore cop had to. <laughs> yeah. They have to. The Baltimore. Yeah. Baltimore. Have you been you never, to Baltimore? You never know. I am pro cop in Baltimore. Ninety nine percent of the time is like this that's what you gotta do, Baltimore. Um no, but I think that he would have been smoked right away. Uh, but if they think he's just some drunk jackass running across the lawn shrieking, trying whatever. to get on the, the paper or trying to get on the news, then like then you know, they just go, oh, let's see what this is. Yeah. You know? Right. Let's see what he's up to. Yeah, because I mean guy. like yeah, think of being the sniper, like fuck, I don't wanna I want to kill this you, guy because he's a life stupid for, idiot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now I might lose my job. And the way that everyone's like so Instagram happy now, that they, they'd be like, "Yeah, somebody out there filming it." Just yeah, well, you guys I mean, that's that's pretty, he didn't even have a gun. Yeah, he's just a guy that's I running. Think, I think we might let that one slide. Nope, because he ran into the White House. Like that's uh, pretty for, for a more popular president, maybe not this guy. But I mean, even still, <laughs> yeah. also, I think unliked. people would say like, "Oh my God, he didn't have like a gun or anything." He didn't like yeah, you know. People know. are strangely weird about that. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty well known that. You, White House is a no-fly zone. So, yeah. I mean, even if you disagree with Trump, like, they, yeah, someone could yeah. be rooting for that person to go in and stab Trump in the neck. Yeah. I wonder if, if they people, were arguing, like, why did they kill that man? I'm like, you're an idiot. He, well, people are dumb about you know? that. Like, the, and, they're, all these, and they're dumb. So that's what All these kids point. that went out on the Harvard, like, they get the game delayed. Oh, because oh, I saw that bullshit. Yeah. That, I was so if you didn't kids see that it, fucking game. That game is terrible. Harvard versus Harvard, Yale. 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 And then all these kids decided to do, like, a protest in the middle of the football field, like, sitting during in the thing. During halftime, yeah. During, was it during halftime? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, like, practicing kicks and shit. It was, like, yeah, a halftime. Yeah, yeah. And then all these kids, hundreds of kids, or I don't know how many, but it looked like a lot. Yeah. Uh, just sit arm-in-arm arm Indian style, like, with a big sign about, like, uh, global warming. Global was, warming. Was, was like, Harvard know, and Yale's not, they're, they're, they're not helping. They're yeah, about whatever. whatever the hell that means. And so, they, dude, when a drunk, fun guy... And I'll say fun guy, a person who's just drunk and fun and having a good time, loves sports, doesn't even want to mess with the game, just runs across and streaks. We're so happy, not me, but we're so happy socially when some security guard just blast the fucking head off yeah. of this dude. Just spears <laughs> off. Well, goo, goo, I, lo- goo, I, goo, I love goo. it just because it's, it's, like, ah. it's funny. Yeah. But these little twats get to sit on the field and actually delay the game. No one rounded them and up and threw them off. Yeah, why is anybody, why is but the security that me happy too, though. tackling those? That would have made me idiots. happy too, though. <laughs> me too. But I'm happy when the drunk guy gets tackled too, not because I hate the drunk guy, but I'm just like, oh, fuck yeah, like look at this. I like it when it's an athlete who does it too because they're not expecting it. They're they're looking out for the security. They're looking for the security and then they're like, 
just strong safety shoulder yeah. checks up. Yeah. I love that. You know, God knows I, uh, you can't do it in the game anymore. So you, <laughs> you, know, you might as well spear a fucking. Streaker. I'm not crazy about the the fans running on the field getting hit by security. I think it's a little too aggressive. A little much. But uh, but you know, if, if everyone How else seems you to be them fine down, with that, it's better than using a taser or a gun. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I guess well, you, I think you should a paintball gun to threat. Because that is also because the, the argument. I, I get your point. Like I would say, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time, it's just a drunk fun person. Who right. wants to, but there's still that point zero 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 one percent chance that they're gonna go fucking headbutt a player or something like cover I don't behind think so. and like. Well, you just you, don't, know, you just don't want them running out there because it encourages other people to do it. But you know what they do down in South well, yeah, America? Like, people love like those like hypotheticals. Like, well, what if he had a gun? What and if? What if? What shot if? Shot Derek Jeter. You're like, that's never happened. Yeah, it's a movie yeah. plot, not an uh, actual yeah, thing. And it's also like, what? Why would he do that? This guy's like, he's a he's happy to be there. In fact, yeah. they, you served him all this alcohol for twelve dollars a cup. Like, but like there's, you, you got yeah, to be you responsible did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in a weird way. But you know, yeah. it's, it all it needs to happen is once, and then it be, could become a more popular thing. You well, know? you know what they do down in South America? I went to a uh, uh, like a it's like the Yankees and Red Sox, uh, but for but for soccer down in Argentina, it's mm-hmm. like River Plate and uh, Boca Juniors in Buenos Aires. Sick game, it was awesome. Um, but on the field, they actually have like a small moat around the field, so you have to like jump across it. And then on each of the four corners, they have four fire like guys manning fire hoses. So if, if somebody jumps on, they just blast them with like a fire. That's so they great. just skid them right off the field. And there awesome. has been attacks on the field. Oh, yeah. the, fir- the first base coach, stabbed. remember? Yeah, I remember that. So it's like, I mean, it, it can happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think that they it's like. They tuned them up. The, the team tuned them up. Which was great. Yeah, yeah. both benches. Yeah. Um, but I guess what I'm saying is that like, uh, there was a big difference between these two jackasses that beat up an old first base coach, and when you just see a guy going like, "Yeah, just no, I don't, it on camera." Yeah, right, 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 I mean, right. like, I get it, a huge that's, difference, and that's why I'm saying it's like, tackle the guy. Like, I don't think we need our the security guys with like tasers or guns to right. take out someone like that, but fucking get smoked. Like, get, I don't like him to get smoked. Get tackled because I've even seen guys get smoked, and then the two other security guards like pile on, like they just fucking they oh, jump, and they you're like, bear. what yeah, yeah. has happened? Yeah. Are you like that bloodthirsty? You're like, man, it's been 90 games and no one's so ran what, on the field. So, <laughs> here's my chance. So what do you suggest? Yeah. You detain them. What do you suggest? I know, responsibly. But, but, but you don't spear the, the fuck out. If but if they're running around, how? You grab them. How? I'm a big man. I guarantee you, if I'm running on a field with guarantee that no one's going to like tackle me, yep. no one's stopping me, dude. Okay. I'm a choke. fucking freight train. Well, okay. And again, it, have you ever seen like a, a dog herd sheep? If, you, if your real concern is that you need this guy off the field and you don't want him hurting a player, right? Yeah. You, you run him in a way where he's now tunnel. getting off of the field or he's and or not but away I, from the player. Yeah, but you I, don't need to go, well, we got a helmet to helmet. Or this well, guy. We got to gore him. Like well, I know no one's going to tackle me. I can blast someone else, you know? What do you mean? I'm a big dude. Like, if I know the security, Randy's a security guy trying to corral me, right? He's trying. To, you guys are trying to corral me, and I know you're not going to tackle me. Who's to say I'm not going to fucking tackle him and then I'm free again. You, well, then you, grab, I mean? you just grab the guy. You don't, it's not like a, it's not like a, I don't know, dude. I don't know why everybody, you get to be Bill Goldberg there's gotta be and some just violence. knocks there's the got, snot out of the guy. There's got to be. <laughs> there's Generally, they be. have an exit route. They're going right across because they don't want to get caught by a security guard. Yeah, they're trying to get to the tunnel. Yeah. Well, the smartest thing they've ever done to try to prevent streakers or people running on the field is they just don't show them on That's TV. That's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. That was the smartest thing because now... They're not getting any glory from it. It's right. all consequence. Yeah, so it's they all, stopped it's doing it. But now with social media, it's all but now with social media, it's back because now that a little bit, you know, but they it, can get but a little bit like of glory. Ne- like they used to like have the broadcasters be like, "Oh, look at this guy. This guy, oh, this idiot's on." And they would yeah. actually air it. Yeah. And so then that person gets the footage. They get the credit. Their friends go, "We saw that was hilarious, man. You're fun." Yeah. And then also, um, you know, it's worth dealing with the consequences. Where now it's all consequences. I think, <laughs> I think we should give the security guards a fucking lasso. That'd be funny. Let them catch Red Dead Redemption style. Let them catch you that way. Red 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 no way, bucks, dude. Would you run across like a, a, like a MLS bucks? game? That's not going to cost me to get out of jail. It's going to cost me more than <laughs> no. to get out of jail, dude. Uh, yes. Yeah. I think that you don't necessarily have to go to jail anymore. I think they changed that. But well, you, you might pay a fine. Let's say 100 bucks and I pay the fine. You get detained. No can I film it? And I think the big rule is that you're never, you're like banned from the sport. That's yeah. like MLS. That's you won't shit shit anyway. I love MLS. I'm a big Sanders fan. I would fan. do it from oh the. My God, I would Tony. do it on soccer. I just lost respect for you, dude. We're the champs. We're <laughs> we just 2019 won, champs. Seattle, Seattle Sounders. Sounders, baby. Oh, okay. I, 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 LA has two teams, right? Yeah. And, yeah. We, and we beat them in the conference finals. I don't know. I went. Like I said I went to a went to a uh, soccer game in South America, and I get why they like going around there. But I, I feel like if the stadium's empty, it's no fucking fun. 
Seattle's Stadiums empty. Are sold Seattle, out Seattle, no, I know Seattle's always packed, but I don't know about LA Galaxy. At- yeah. Atlanta yeah. has eighty thousand people there every game. You know, so it's just, a lot of these stadiums are small because Home like, Depot Center has like 12 it's tiny, fans. but it's because that was one of the first MLS stadiums. Now the league's up to like twenty eight teams. Yeah. They're playing. The Atlanta team plays where the Falcons play, and they pack that shit out. Are these guys getting real Sounders contracts? Play, yeah, I mean, well, it depends. I mean, Sounders okay. game is tricky too. You get people like Wayne Rooney. Who was like one of England's yeah. greatest players? Like he played for Atlanta, and like you know, so it's like those yeah. kind the of Sounders. Guys are they bragged that they've never not had a sold out game, which is true. But, but they, they also close like off they the tarp top. off the top. They bowl. paper the room. So it's like yeah, it's like it's like closing that back curtain of a comedy club. <laughs> sure. and be like I sold out. Yeah. Like, oh, you yeah. didn't got, sell out. Jeff. All the homeless on Seattle to come hey, into the they stadium. Got, they got they got uh, they got better numbers out, than guys. the Mariners when What's it comes to when it comes to like like attendance per game. Sure. So yeah, because the Mariners are like dog shit. Yeah. And the Sounders are really good. Yeah. And also, it's a fun, hipstery kind of thing to like soccer. Yeah. And Seattle's famously like that. Yeah. So, like, just the fact that we got soccer and makes some to, people go, to, like, oh, my God, honestly, I love this, soccer. This I used is, to play soccer. And this is, this is like, weird. I used to, like, not like soccer. And it was literally from playing FIFA, the oh, game, yeah, yeah. that I, like, started to, like appreciate the game more where it's like we'd play two on two with my friends and like just like the trying to get like a nice pass to my friend and not scoring was still like exciting, exciting. I, used to, yeah. I used to be like a shot on goal fucking one to zero yeah. stupid but then i appreciate those moments more oh, i got I way more into football yeah. because of madden football oh yeah, yeah. Playing tournaments well, i don't hate kids. soccer yeah no. and in fact the fact that we have a team makes me very encouraged to like get into it but uh i'm hoping that happens with hockey too i was gonna say oh, i was hockey's about to ask gonna you, be they start 2021 with the uh 2021 slash griffins or whatever they're gonna call them yeah. yeah i don't know what's gonna happen i'm making a big push i don't know who to contact i want squatch to be the mascot of the sounders yeah the the sounders of the hockey team he there's, should be the city's permanent there's, well, a, there's a thing there's a list of names and i don't I saw yeah the krakens is the one i'm rooting oh, sorry, for krakens. yeah but it would be great if squatch was the mascot right and he's got him out there he's doing his whole thing and then when the sonics come back we have yeah, the you've, first you've two pitched time that. school yeah, two, two sport time, two sport mascot yeah, at the same that. time that's a great idea That'd be I, great. That'd be great. We have the Bo Jackson, the Deion Sanders of mascots. <laughs> yeah. Deion Sanders of mascots. That'd be great. I don't, I don't know why cities don't keep the same. I guess if you have two two teams in the same uh, in the same sport, but like, yeah, it should like like the Philly Fanatics should be all the fucking Philly. That'd be great. Yeah. Well, here's what happened: is the um, there was a mascot for the Montreal Canadiens or something, or no, the when. There was a team that left somewhere, and then that mascot was just kind of left behind. So he got to be the mascot of, of like a, a different team there. Uh, so yeah. that's happened before, but there's never been a mascot who's the mascot for two different teams at the same time. Yeah, and Squatch could be that mascot. Yeah, I'm the guy. I want it to happen, but no yeah. one else gives a shit. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder why they don't do that. Maybe it's because just like all the extra stuff uh, a mascot has to do, you know, going to events and stuff. And I it's hate like, but, to, but just pick. Just pick. Just wear one of the jerseys. So, you know, it's fine. I, I hate to, um, you know, pull back that curtain on you, Tony, but you just get another costume. That's what and I'm another saying. Another person. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. But I'm thinking <laughs> is, like, is that what, what they, you know. Like at Disneyland, there's 75 Mickeys walking around with right. like different uh, Creepy. costumes. Yeah. Uh, or different shirts on, but it's the same. Have you had a mascot on the podcast? Uh, yeah. Well, because mascots, that w- it wouldn't be good. Some of them talk, don't they? Mascots themselves, like the San Diego Chicken talks um, a little bit. Uh, that'd be a good guest. That's what I'm Let's saying. See if I can man. book that motherfucker. But every other mascot doesn't talk. Okay. And the guys that are in the costume don't of want to, be out of, yeah, be to out of costume. say well, who would, how they fun, are. How fun would that be, though? We have a mascot sitting no, here who's saying, not talking, full, but he's still communicating in the full uniform. I want them in full. In, <laughs> or it'd be in great if we get the guy, but he just doesn't tell us what mascot he is. Because the mascot com- culture is no, very, very fascinating. I want the real mascot. Well, we can I do want that too. Him the chicken sitting there. It's not too far. I get him up here for an afternoon. <laughs> Dude. In the chicken costume. I'm going to reach out to him. I'll even book him. I'll pay him. I'll pay him to come be on the pod. Uh, <laughs> that's a great idea. Good idea. So I know we're a little over time here, but... Uh, a couple weeks ago, we've had guests since then, so we haven't got to talk about it. Uh, me and my friend Derek Graff went over oh, we in Chicago, and uh, we drove over to Indiana one hour away to go to the Mascot oh, Hall yeah, of Fame. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I, I saw the photos. It was so great. I got a lot of notes for the guy that owns that museum. <laughs> like, I'm going to change a lot of things. I'm going to reach out to him. He's the original uh, creator, original uh, mascot of the Philly Fanatic, who okay. owns, who runs the whole Mascot Hall of Fame. And I got a ton of ideas for him that he's going to be like, who is this guy? <laughs> hey, I'm you put know, you on the board of directors. You know your stuff. Yeah, and also like, there's so many different like creative ideas that they could do with that place that would be so much, so much better. Um, but I think I thought it was kind of funny that the the um, mascot Hall of Fame has its own mascot. 
Oh, like, really? How funny is that? What is it? <laughs> it's that stuffed animal that's over there. His name is Reggie the... I think it's Reggie. Reggie the, the Purple Party Dude, which is a horrible name. Yeah. Uh, Reggie the Purple Party Dude. He also looks pink, it in is. my opinion. Oh, what, like yeah. what? That's not purple. It's like magenta. He has French fries for hair. A weird and, uh, pink dick nose. Yes, it kind of does look like an uncircumcised Reggie, penis. Reggie with a Y. Yeah, Reggie the Party Whoa. Purple Dude. Or the purple party dude. Purple uh, party dude. What a fun, fun place though, and I, I loved everything there. I like raided the gift bear. shop. Yep. Is build, it, they uh, have a build a bear in the actual mascot hall of fame. How big is it? Is it fairly big? What are you talking about here? A couple floors. It's a couple floors. It actually looks gigantic on the outside. Like it looks like it's like huge. But yeah. this is in Chicago. No, it's in Indiana. Indiana. Uh, Whiting, Indiana, and uh, it's actually you can build a bear can get more right white like that. I built Indiana. that. Um, they they have them there. The problem is they don't have the rights. Like the NBA won't give them the rights. The MLB won't. Give, nobody will give them the rights to actually build a mascot. So you can build like just a bear, like you know, build like a little stuffed oh, animal, just like generic stuff. And then you could build that because obviously they have the rights to that because it's their own. This mascot. guy's onto something. What's it? Go? What's the founder's name? Do you have there? Uh, let me look it up. It's David. He's like. I mean, th this is the kind of thing like the league should be all about. This. I mean, talk about family friendly. Oh yeah. I mean, like there's more family friendly than the, than, the, than the actual Hall of Fame, where you know half those guys were, you know, uh, you know. Drug addicts or abusers or use PEDs or whatever the hell else they got in trouble for, DUIs and whatnot. Like, yeah. You know, like you always say, like, these guys never beat their wife. They're never going to yeah. bitch about a contract. Uh, if the kids always love them, I, this is this is an untapped resource. I think I think your listeners should be pinging this guy's Twitter account and have you put on the I'm board of directors you, of, of this. I want to help. I want to help him out for sure. The because I've got some good. Uh, here's here's one of the things that I would uh, argue that he needs to work on. I'm trying to find the mascot Hall of Fame founder's name. Uh, so you're the first Philly fanatic. I know, but I'm just trying to. David Raymond. Is David his name. Raymond. He also created. Jeff Dye on the board. David you heard Raymond. Him first. He also created Gritty. No shit. He was the first yeah. Philly fanatic Gritty and he created up. Gritty and Gritty blew up. Um, and then he created the Mascot Hall of Fame, which is under a little bit of uh, controversy because they originally wanted to do it in Philadelphia. And then this guy was like, no, it's in Indiana. So there's a little bit of a debacle there. But David Raymond, I want to want to work with you. I want to give you Follow some us. ideas. Here's one of the, the ideas I have is. Um, Here's a free one. No more freebies, though. Yeah, this sh it, it should be as if it is a Hall of Fame. So when you go to the Hall of Fame for the NFL, you see all this stuff about the NFL. It teaches the people that go there about football and about the greats and about the records and about the things. Um, people that aren't in the Hall of Fame, in inducted in the Hall of Fame, there's still things of them there. So, like yeah. for example, in the MLB in Cooperstown, Barry Bonds is all over the Hall of Fame. Right. There's, there's, there's like tons of and, yeah, there's yeah. balls and. Right, and there's and uniform. it shows the home run race. It has all that. It's just that Barry Bonds isn't inducted in the Hall of Fame, so he doesn't have a placard a bust, yeah. and, a, and a bust. And so here's the problem with the mascot Hall of Fame is that it's only really celebrating the people who have the mascots who have been in instead of all mascots in general. It should be yeah. celebrating all the mascots, yeah. and then there should be a place where you go and you get to see the who's shrine yeah, of who's the, in. Yeah. Whereas this doesn't have that. They have like a little area where they're like, oh, here's all the people that are in, and it's got like a bobblehead of them or. Whatever. Whatever. There's no busts. There's no placards. Also, I don't believe that the people that are in the Hall of Fame get like a ring or anything. They should have some sort of thing that they can brag. I'm in the mascot. Does Hall it? Of Fame. Does it? Is it a, the human who's in the Hall of Fame, no, or is it the mascot? The mascot, I would say. It's the mascot. Okay. But Cause, also, because like, there's a few. Because sometimes there's like different people play the. How mascot. about a patch? Yeah. So you give like each person that's inducted in the Hall of Fame gets like. 20 patches and they can put it on each one no matter what they wear they get to wear that mascot hall of fame yeah, patch. Like a yellow jacket with a patch something, yeah. yeah like just give them something so we go oh my We're god that mascot is so famous here. and he's been whatever yeah david love you buddy reach out to me i'm gonna help Let's make and it happen. I, I'm, I'm happy to work with you i'm excited about a lot of stuff that i tell you about in private um <laughs> Randy, you got anything to plug, bud? Uh, yeah, the Ready Set Blow podcast every Wednesday. It's coming out tomorrow as usual. Who you got uh, tomorrow? We got Alex Gellin tomorrow. Nice. So uh, the guy threw the penny at. We talk about He's Judaism. Awesome. He's a great guy. We talk about who? Judaism. We rank white people, which oh. is which is fun. How do you rank who do you, white Who do you have? Alex Gellin. Gellin. Oh, That's right. next week. Yeah, you don't know him. You'll meet him. Yeah. Uh, He's a good guy. Good dude. Another comic. Uh, actually, started in Boston. I think he started out here when he moved to Boston right, and left right before I started comedy. But oh, nice. uh, we stayed in touch. Uh, but yeah, every Wednesday, me and Chase Sable chop it up. Like I said, this week we talk, we rank our, you know, our, our white people in order of, you know, favorite to least favorite. Favorite? To, that's a lot of white people. Yeah. Chase went with Italians, number one. Oh, Italians. you mean, you mean, oh, okay. Yeah. I get it. We, I yeah, get we, it. we break down the white race Not into subcategories. Not individual people. Oh, no, 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 That's no, why no. I was like, what? Yeah. No. yeah. Oh, I see. So who would your favorite white race be? Yeah. Like Irish, Canadian, 
Uh, so yeah. who's your number one? Mine? Yeah. Oof. Uh, I don't know. Fuck yeah, it. I don't know. I guess uh, <laughs> British. <laughs> yeah. They love to drink. The wasps. They yeah. chill. Yeah. They're uh, they're know. pretty funny. Notorious. Yeah. They have a charming accent. Uh, yeah. I think I went Irish just because they're light skinned drinkers. Peruvians yeah. are my number light one. Skin. I guess I don't know. <laughs> just white, just just white people in Peru. Light <laughs> skinned <laughs> South African. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, they have a white bad. Tra- they have a really yeah. bad track record. Yeah, that's true. No shit. Um, <laughs> but that's that's what I got every week. And obviously, follow me on Instagram at Randy Valerio. Perfect. Yep. You can probably seen him if you come to my shows in the last year, uh, or you're going to see him in the f- future shows. Come, come watch him do some stand up. Yeah, uh, we have Oxnard coming up soon, and then uh, Arizona. I'm in Arizona for one night. Saturday which will night, be good. the thirtieth. Uh, Tony, what do you got to plug? Yeah, I'm um, doing some stuff, uh, gaming stuff. YouTube.com/slash Screen Peekers. Uh, a lot of fun. A lot of new stuff coming there too. So, so check that out, and uh, just follow me on social media at I am Tony Revis, Twitter and Instagram. Which is funny, I got a lot of love. Uh, I just did an Uber commercial. and I saw and, that. And, that was fun. You know, it's, it's fun, right? And it's so funny the disconnect of that people have of like what I do. When I have like people from home that are like, dude, fuck yeah, you did it. Like you're, you do it. I'm like, you don't understand. Like that was like, I sat around for six hours. I got to that set for like literally an hour and I just did this. And I'm in it for five seconds. And people are like, whoa. Yeah. But then it's like, I've done way cooler stuff. That's just not an Uber commercial. It's tricky. So, like, TV makes it real like, for people eh. for some reason. Yeah. Like, if you're still eh. on TV, they're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. yeah so. Seeing your friend pop up on a movie it. screen, nothing makes me more, Yeah, I got to work harder. Yeah. Like, not, like when you see a guy. <laughs> so I, I appreciate I appreciate the love. Just it's, That was not fulfilling <laughs> as an artist. Just, oh, career. my God. Like yeah. I'm with a girl and we're at a movie theater, and then all of a sudden like a guy I know is just in the movie. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. I got to get my shit together. I got to work harder. <laughs> yeah. Tony's in Uber cars? Oh, yeah. So thanks, thanks for the I'm thanks, drinking beer right now and Tony's love. on television. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for the love, people. All right. Uh, f- yeah, go to jeffdow.com. Check out my uh, calendar. We've got a lot of stuff coming up. Gotham Comedy Club. A lot nice. of stuff. Busy next year. Busy, it's busy early be next year. A lot that's, of, our, that's our lot origin story is Gotham Comedy Club. That's right. Yeah. The best. I love that place. I haven't, and I got, they've been real good to me. They used to book me before I was even on television. First place I did with you. Yeah. And Very Chris, I have both of our origin stories there mm-hmm. a little bit. Oh, no shit. Chris Mazilia, the owner of that club, respect to him. He's the best. They're just so supportive. They're I love his like, name already. Uh, I haven't met the man, but he sounds like my kind of guy. He's chill. He's not like um, a real. Uh, he's not like a, oh, I'm going to go get a beer with you guy. He's, he's a no nonsense kind of guy. He's like guy? Um, very straight, like just. He, a very, he's a man. Like he's okay. like a he's like a man who will not be fucked with. You know, yeah. <laughs> I love it's him. interesting. Yeah, he's he's great. I really respect him and love him. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. Friendship. How about that? Another great episode. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, like I said, go to my Patreon, subscribe, go to iTunes. Uh, I, iTunes? Don't go to iTunes. I bet that's inappropriate. Go to iTunes and uh, subscribe. We love you guys so much. It's been so much fun doing this. We're not stopping. We made some jokes that we might uh, not be able to afford to keep doing this, but we ain't quitting, baby. We're going to be 500 episodes, 1,000 episodes with zero dollars. We'll still keep doing it. Um, but we would appreciate your support. So if you guys go to patreon.com slash Jeff Die and you subscribe, it will definitely help with the amount of guests and content that we give you guys. Um, we love all of you so much. Thanks for being here week to week. <laughs>